Like most of the Midwest, Wichita can seem pretty culturally and ethnically homogenous, but we're not, and we never were. Immigration has affected the city in countless ways, from the culinary traditions brought in from Germany and Latin America, to the strong tradition of entrepreneurship brought in from the Middle East and across Asia. So what does our past tell us about Wichita's immigrant identity? And how will that identity continue to shape our city's future? Well, my grandfather came in about 1895. It was the very end of the Ottoman Empire. Life for Christians in the Middle East was getting increasingly difficult. So many Arabic, Syrian, Lebanese emigrated to the United States. This is Warren Farha, owner of Eighth Day Books in Uptown Wichita. The name Farha is well known in Wichita, along with other Lebanese names like Jabara, Kolmia, Abla, and Stephen, names that are associated with the tradition of entrepreneurship. You remember that Wichita was basically 20, 25 years old as a city. It was wide open with opportunity, especially for merchants. They all sort of gathered on the near west side of Wichita in what is now Delano. And so there was a real cohesive sense of community and it was for survival and it was also for the sense of family that they had left behind in southern Lebanon. Wichita's Lebanese community stayed in the Delano area until around the 1930s before spreading their influence across the city. Although there was some prejudice against this Lebanese community, most Wichitans really welcomed and tried to aid them in establishing themselves here. Lebanese immigration hasn't stopped either. And while early generations of immigrants came to Wichita as merchants, more recent immigrants have come to train as doctors. Dr. Jay Price, a history professor at Wichita State University, says it takes an influx of outsiders to truly change a city. The early Lebanese immigrants proved that. But that begs the question, could immigrants still come to Wichita and find success today? I think Wichita is a beautiful city for immigrants. This is Claudia Amaro, co-owner of ABC Bilingual Resources and a Mexican-American immigrant herself. Claudia first came to the United States at the age of 12 and moved to Wichita at 18. Her journey was not an easy one. I love this community. I fall in love with Wichita. And then later, I fall in love with my husband here in Wichita. We got married in 1998, and my son was born here in Wichita in 2000. We were just having a really happy life in Wichita. He had a business. I was a stay-at-home mom. I was getting ready to start a business myself. And then one morning, he was detained by a police officer, and then he was turned into immigration later. I went and tried to help him, and both of us were arrested. I was uh, released the next morning, um, but his case was a little bit harder. He ended up being deported in January of 2006. I decided to um, follow my husband with my son, who was six years old then. In 2007, a wave of violence came into Mexico. It was very hard for my family. We saw it first. We saw bodies hanging from bridges, shootings every night. And then one day in 2012, my husband was kidnapped for ransom by two police officers in Mexico. I thought I was never going to see him again. Fortunately, we paid the ransom, and he was able uh, to come home. But at the time, I was feeling very desperate, and I really wanted to come home. In 2013, I joined a group of dreamers at the border, eight of us uh, who grew up in the United States and from different reasons were back in Mexico. And we presented ourselves, ourselves at, the, at the border, and we asked President Obama to let us come back home. Amara was detained for 17 days before being allowed back into the United States with her son. Her husband also presented himself at the border. He was detained for two years and three months. Fortunately, both of us are here now, and we are trapped in the system. We're fighting. We go to courts so often, like every two years. Uh, I, I guess this is a long process. We wake up every morning proving ourselves and trying to prove the world that this is our home. This is where we belong. Amaro's story is reflected in countless Mexican immigrants trying to create a better future here in the States. But the difficulties don't always stop once they arrive. Like right now, I really think Wichita is still pretty segregated. The Latino community is predominantly in one part of town. The African-American community is in another part of town. I really want to see that change. You know, I want all of us to start talking to each other and knowing each other better. This segregation can lead to communities being siloed. When they are cut off, they don't feel welcome. And when they don't feel welcome, they leave. 
the majority of our students are uh, Hispanics, Vietnamese, and then there are uh, Chinese, Koreans, Arabic. Without exaggeration, I can say about 10 to 15 languages. This is Mohan Kambampati. He's the coordinator at the Wichita Indochinese Center, a place where immigrants can learn important skills in their transition to living in Wichita, Kansas. As the director of the annual Asian Festival, Mohan believes the more Wichitans know about these groups, the better. Ignorance is not bliss. There are things, if you don't know the people, you, you misunderstand sometimes. The Asian Festival is one way to better understand the Asian cultures represented in Wichita. This October, the Asian Festival is the 38th annual Asian Festival. 15,000 people attend. And of course, I have to confess, 60% of them come for food. <laughs> but it's a very good festival. I mean, these are very popular. But isn't culture more than just food? Shouldn't we also be trying to learn the values and the cultural identity and doing what we can to ensure immigrants feel comfortable sharing that? I respect also the United States a lot. I'm just so proud of this kind of mixed culture in me. You know, I came in when I was 12, and to me, I feel so blessed by being able to feel comfortable in both sides. Amaro says not everyone has that level of comfort. She has tried to help them by creating a Spanish-speaking radio show, a newspaper, and becoming an advocate for immigrants across Wichita and the U.S. And with that radio show, I really want to bring up all the good things that we bring to this country, to this city. Just as the Farhas and the rest of the Wichita Lebanese community began moving out of the Delano neighborhood in the 1930s, Amaro says she hopes the Latin American community can feel comfortable spreading across the city in the future. I stand on the shoulders of giants. The sense of community is so powerful and so nourishing. People like me are deeply grateful for that. If Wichita can embrace its immigrant heritage, more immigrants from across the world can feel welcome to shape a better and more diverse future for our city.